Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on getting started with Power Query. It's one of a series of tutorials on using the Power Business Intelligence tools within Excel 2013. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. We'll start with showing how to install Power Query in Excel 2013, then look at how to create basic queries within Power Query to extract, transform and load data, We'll look at different options for loading data, either into an Excel worksheet or the underlying Power Pivot data model. We'll look at how to create data transforms within a query to manipulate data. And finally, we'll look at how to edit queries you've created to delete tasks or rename them or anything else. So let's get started. Unlike all of the other Microsoft Power Business Intelligence applications, Power Query requires separate installation. And you'll be able to tell when you've done that because between the view or the develop tab and any others there'll be a power query tab just here in fact you can see it's missing the first thing to do to find out is whether you'll support running power query and you can do that by choosing the file menu in excel 2013 going to account and you can see that i'm running microsoft office 365 pro plus and as long as you've got the words pro plus or professional plus or something similar you should be okay so I'll come out of that and what I now need to do is go to Google or some other search engine I believe they exist and search for the download and the shortest phrase I can think of to type in is Microsoft space 39379 because that is the ID number of the download on the Microsoft website and you can see it's come straight up with it as number one so I can click on that link and download Microsoft Power Query it's a free download and I can choose from a variety of languages I'm going to go for English click on the download button and decide whether I want 32-bit or 64-bit this depends on the copy of Excel you're running if I go back to Excel I will now be able to find that out again I'll go to file from the menu and again choose account but this time if I click on the about Excel button it will come up at the top saying whether I'm using 32 or 64-bit and it's 32-bit as recommended when I installed Office 365 so I can choose OK to confirm that and cancel out of that and I can choose to download 32-bit now my experience of this is I needed to click on the next button and then nothing happened so what I need to do on my machine and there may be a way around this is it says if your download doesn't start click here if I click there suddenly there's a link here which I can then click on to download my Power Query so I'll click on that it's going to save the file it's 11 megabytes but I've got a pretty fast connection here and you can see it's appeared there in my Windows Explorer if I now double click on that it will say do you want to run this file I do I can choose next to go through the next next stages and you can see I've actually been telling a bit of a lie here I've actually already installed Power Query which is why I'm not going to go through the rest of the installation so for the moment I'll just choose cancel to come out of that and I'll take you back to Excel and we'll see how to enable Power Query. Now there's a good chance that if you install Power Query you won't have anything more to do. Power Query will appear as an option up here. But if you want to retrieve it or if anything goes wrong, here's how to do it. If you choose File from the menu and this time if you go to Options, if you click on the Add-ins on the left hand side you'll see a list of all the add-ins you have enabled in Excel. Now my problem is Power Query isn't listed, so what I need to do is go down to where it says Manage and choose to go to Com Add-ins, which is what Power Query is, click on the Go button and tick the box next to Microsoft Power Query. If I then choose OK, you should be able to see that Power Query comes in. This time it's my last tab actually, and now I will be able to use Power Query. So having set up Power Query, the next thing to do is to actually use it. To do that, in our new workbook or an existing workbook, click on the Power Query tab and then choose where you're going to get your data from. There's a huge range of sources. Some of the most interesting ones are from other sources. You can get information from Facebook. I know that works because I tried it and it was uh, weird to see my list of likes appearing in an Excel spreadsheet. You can get information from SAP, from salesforce.com, you can get it from the Azure Cloud, you can get it from Access or SQL Server or any other database, you can get it from Excel or CSV files. In fact, I think the range of data sources is more impressive than I've seen for any other application. 
Perhaps that's why there's a little smiley face on the feedback button. We're going to do none of those though. We're going to get information from a website. And to make life a bit easier, what I've done is created a blog on our wiseisle.co.uk website. So if you go to that URL, if you go to that web address, if you go to resources and choose blogs, they're categorized on the left hand side. If you choose MS Office, and within that if you choose Power BI XL 2013, you'll see a list of links and probably one near the top gives useful links and downloads for video tutorials. So if you click on that, you'll see underneath the Power Query heading that there's a link to a Wikipedia population data table. If you click on that, it will come up with a website which lists a number of different tables. You can see that because if you scroll down, in particular there's a table of countries and dependencies by population. And what we're going to do in Excel is not only import that, but also create a link to it so that when this list updates, the Excel spreadsheet will automatically update. And we'll even edit the data as it comes in to uh, remove a few discrepancies. So to do this, the first thing to do is to copy the URL, the website address, to the clipboard. And then in Excel, if you go to Power Query, go to From Web, and if you paste in the URL into this box. If you then choose OK, what Power Query will do is look down that website and see if it can find any tables, and it's actually found three. Now two of them aren't terribly interesting. I've no idea what that means, and I don't really know what that table is either. But the first one, Countries and Dependencies by Population, looks of interest. So I can double click on that to open it in Power Query. And what I'll now do is show how to uh, extract, transform and load this data so that it makes more sense. What I'm going to do is ignore the problems I've got with this data for the moment and just load it directly into Excel. You can do that in one of two ways. You can click on Close and Load and either choose a default option at the top, which will load it into the default destination. That's almost certainly your current Excel worksheet. Alternatively, you can give yourself more choices by choosing this second option, which is what I'm going to do now. This is a bit of a confusing dialog box. It asks you two separate questions. The first one is, do you want to bring it into your worksheet? If you choose Table, that's exactly what will happen. If you choose only Create Connection, what it will do is create a link to the underlying data, but won't actually import it. So I'm going to leave it as tables so I see the information in a new worksheet. Tacked on at the bottom is a completely separate question, which is, do you want to add this data into your underlying Power Pivot data model? So I'm going to do that as well so I can show you what happens. If you now choose Load to load the data, it will appear in two different places. The first place is as an Excel table, which you can see has been given a sensible name. But also, if I now go into Power Pivot, which I can do by clicking on the Power Pivot tab and clicking on Manage, you can see it's coming in as a table in Power Pivot 2. And I will be able to link that table to other tables, rename it, delete columns, all of the usual Power Pivot um, functionality. What I'm going to do though is go straight back to Excel <coughs> and show now how to change this load settings which I found very hard to learn when I was teaching myself Power Query. It turns out that what you do is this. If you click on the query in your list, three dots appear. It's tempting to think you want to click on the Edit button, but if you click on these un un unpromising three dots, what you'll be able to do is change the Load To options. A much clearer dialog box appears, and you can now tick what you want to do. So if, for example, I've decided I don't want to refresh the data model, I can untick that box and choose Load, and what will happen now is it will load the information into Excel. It's displaying a warning saying that it's going to lose the data model data, and what it's done is load the latest up-to-date data from the underlying website into the Excel, web, uh, Excel sheet. But if I go into Power Pivot, you can see it's completely empty because it's got rid of my old data from that. It's time now to tidy up the data which we've loaded. Obvious problems. We've got an extra row up here, which really shouldn't be there, giving the field headings. The population is left aligned, which suggests it's being treated as text and not a number. The world population is also left aligned, and which will give the same problem. 
We've got a couple of extra columns, the date and the source, which we really aren't interested in and don't need. And the heading for the country or dependent territory is a bit wordy and we could shorten that. So what we'll do is solve all of these problems and the way to do that is to go back into Power Query. To do that, if you go to the Power Query tab and make sure you click on Show Pane to bring up your list of queries on the right hand side. They're saved alongside the workbook, but if the Show Pane box isn't ticked, it can be quite hard to believe that. I'm going to double click on the query I created to edit it, and I'm going to go through and create some transforms. The first and most obvious thing I need to do is to sort out the row headings. So to do that, there's a box which says Use First Row as Headers. That's exactly what I want to do. If I tick on that, that will solve that problem. The next thing I want to do is to rename my columns. So the country or dependent territory, I'm going to rename and just call country. It may not be accurate geographically, but I can live with that. And then I'm going to get rid of the columns I'm not interested in, which are the date column and the source column. I use the control key to select them because they were next door to each other. To remove them, I can click on this tool. If I choose remove other columns, it will do the opposite to what I want. It will delete all the other columns. So I'm going to choose remove columns and they'll disappear. Now what you notice is it's gradually building up a list of st query steps. And when I click on any one of these, you can see the progress is made to that date, the cumulative progress. The next thing I need to do is sort out the population. What I'm hoping is this will be easy. I'm hoping when I change the data type of this column to a whole number, the Power Query will recognize that, and it has done, and right justified it. I'm nearly home and dry. I can do the same thing to the percent of the world, change out to a decimal number, and I get a load of errors. And that's because it didn't recognize they were numbers, the percentage sign was stopping it doing that. So what I need to do is to undo that step. I can do that by going to my list of steps, clicking on the cross next to the one I want to remove, and it will disappear. What I need to do first is replace all the percentage signs in that column with blank strings. So I can do that by clicking on replace values and changing the percent sign to nothing. If I choose OK, they'll disappear. And what I can now do is change the data type of that to a decimal number. And those figures will be OK. And I should have finished, but what's actually happened is my population figures have reverted back to the left. And the reason that happened is when I deleted the task, it had combined two different things into the same task, I think. And so I've now got to redo my population figures. So you have to keep an eye on what you're deleting. What I'm going to do now is to show how you can rename the query and any steps within it, and also how you can delete individual transforms or bulk transforms. Let's start with the easy thing. I'm going to rename the query, so let's call it import country data. I can just overtype the previous name and press return. I can rename individual tasks in much the same way. So for this replaced value task, what I'm going to do is change that to say replace percent sim symbols, if I could but type. And for this changed type one, I'm going to rename that and call it change data types. To illustrate how deleting transforms works, I'm going to add two new ones. The first thing we'll do is sort the countries into alphabetical order by clicking on the A to Z task at the top of the screen. And then I'll rename this percent of world column by right clicking on it, choosing rename, and I'll call it just percentages. I've added two new transforms. What I want to do now is change the sorted rows one. It's getting a bit ahead of myself there. To do that, you can click on it and either click on this cross or right click and choose delete. Both of those two things will do the same thing. They will delete that individual transform, but they won't have any effect on subsequent ones. It's usually safer to right click and choose delete until end. And what that will do is delete not just that transform, but all the subsequent ones as well. And the reason that's a safer thing to do is because it may be the case uh, transforms further on down the line won't work if their predecessors have been deleted. On this occasion, actually, I didn't need to be quite so cautious because the transform to change the name of this column can't possibly have been affected by sorting a completely different one. But hey-ho. To show when this can go wrong, 
Let's take the replace percent symbols transform and delete it in isolation. It comes up with a dialog box warning me I'm about to do something catastrophic. And indeed, that's what that's justified by the results. You can see now that my percent of world column has errors all the way down it. And the reason for that is that the predecessor task has been deleted and so the percentage symbols are still in the column. What I now need to do is to insert a task to change the percentage symbols to blanks. And so probably the safest thing to do is just delete that last task as well and recreate the scenario I had before. That is, to replace all the percentage symbols with a blank and then to change the data type of this to a decimal number. Irritatingly, what I've then got to do is also change the population to a whole number because that was all caught up in the changed type task. And so when I deleted that, I deleted the two transforms, one for the population column and one for the percent of world column. I think I've now finished. What I can do is to load this data into Excel. And what you should see as we wait patiently for it to load is that I've got numerical columns, they've all got sensible names, and I'm good to go. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.